Hi guys, welcome to this video. This is my solo flawless run of the Pit of Heresy dungeon, which is the dungeon that was released obviously with Shadow Keep. Now I've already done a normal walkthrough, which is just to get the completion, but this is the flawless run. So I'm kind of going to be acting in this run like you know what you're doing, like you've maybe watched my run or watched someone else's run. So I'm not going to be really talking too much about how the encounters work, although I will cover them a little bit. But this is more or less keeping you alive during the run. So at the start of the video, like I do with most of my videos, I'm giving you a heads up of what I'm using. Now, you'll see me click to something then or move across to something in my inventory. That's what I'll be switching to at the boss. So we're going to run almost picture perfect to what I ran the normal. So I'm going to be using Long Shadow. Uh, Yotun and 21% Delirium and then at the boss I'm going to switch to Izanagi Recluse uh, it'll get its last hurrah I suppose before it gets nerfed, we'll speak a little bit about that during the run as well and the Love and Death Grenade Launcher now my Love and Death as you might have seen in the video has uh, full court uh, spike grenades and boss spec so pretty much about as much damage as you can do with a grenade launch I highly recommend you farm that I'm also using a couple of Hive mods, I'm using Hive Armaments and Hive Invigoration, both of which I drop during normal menageries, so I suggest you go and maybe do, make sure you do your menageries, if you've got three characters, run run nine menageries, three on each character, but when you're doing it, make sure that you use the runes to to create armour, because you can only put the, the Hive Armaments on either Opulence Armour, which you get from the menagerie, or Crownosaurus Armour, which you get from the Chronosaurus raid. They're pretty much, I decided not to run with uh, Devour. You can, and I suggest if you're if you're comfortable with using it, then it will help a ton. I don't really like using Devour because I, I feel like it, I'm too interested in keeping grenades and you know watching the clock for the Devour, so I'd much rather just have a strategy that keeps me alive that I don't need, you know, Crimson or Devour or any of those things, just the strategy keeps me alive. So we are going to be re we are going to be using the grenade pretty heavily. Uh, Oppressed Darkness is obviously really strong and will be for the next couple of weeks. Uh, when the next season starts, I have a feeling Solar's going to get a lot of play. Scouts will get a bit of play. Pulse maybe, maybe even Sidearms. Uh, so so that's kind of the setup. That's what I'm going to be running with. Now the the other thing I would suggest for anybody doing this is just go in and learn it. Don't don't worry about don't worry about getting the, the flawless. If you're doing it each week for pinnacles, eventually you'll become that attuned and and comfortable with the encounters that you'll be able to you'll be able to get through them without actually dying. You know because you'll just you'll know what to expect. But hopefully the little things that I suggest in this video are going to help a ton. So I always stand on this this chain because. That's a direct route all the way through. Make sure you boost before you hit the bottom because it can be annoying to die from fall damage here. Excuse my jumping here because I was actually I was actually looking at something else during this run while I was just getting down to the front. So there'll be a couple of times where I'm doing that just at the start of this. I, I was fully engaged for the rest of it. So let's talk about this first encounter. So you guys understand how to do this, right? There's six towers. One of them, eight, which is the one with A on it. That is where you basically unlock the Sword Knight, so you'll, you'll kill out the Pit Keeper, which unlocks the door to each tower. Each tower has a Pit Keeper. You'll kill the Pit Keeper, that unlocks the door. And then, from A, you'll kill the, the Sword Bearer, and that will unlock the Sword Bearers for the rest of the area. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I just always go A. I've never actually tested not going A first. So I always go A, do that first. And then once you kill the pit keeper, you'll have sigils on the back wall, which are basically the locations of the three the three mini bosses that you have to kill. Now the sword has a couple of functions. You can block, you can right trigger fire fire uh, an energy bolt, uh, similar to the Black Talon exotic sword, and you've got right shoulder. You've also got a super attack. Now you use those different attacks to attack the different bosses. Right trigger the Black Talon esque attack is for the wizard right shoulder the swift 
slashing attack is for the shielded knight, and you block and deflect the shrieker shots to kill kill the shrieker. So that's the encounter. What I kind of done here for the flawless was I. I decided to take out as many of the ogres as I could from up here. I'm on top of eight at this moment. And this is a little game I, I've been playing. There's a there's a there's uh, an ogre down there. And I think I just missed him with this grenade. I normally do hit him. That's pretty close, right? So, I take it that was two ogres. Now, I, we're, gonna, we're, we're both, uh, as we're watching this, we're, we're going to work out how many ogres there are. Because I'm, I'm unsure if it's six or seven. But as you can see, I'm, I'm not going to be shy with my super. I'm going to hit, whenever I get my super, we're going to use it on a, on a big ad, right? So, now that I've took, took I'm just going to have a look and see if there's another rogue or anywhere about. I want to make, or my, my job here, was to try and make my journeys between the towers as easy as possible. Now, I never found a correlation between the ads that you get, like, boomer knights and, and some sniper ads that will randomly spawn i never actually found a reason or a way to stop them from spawning at first i thought it might have been if i was moving through the area without a sword if i was swordless did that make that happen was it if there were still ogres up i have a feeling it might still be the ogre thing but the idea is once you once you've got once you've used the sword if you have enough sword ammo Use that, use the sword flying ability, whether you're on Titan, Hunt, or Warlock, it doesn't matter. Not this, this is like Warlock skating with the sword. Not that ability, just right, sh right shoulder, you know, the quick attack. Just use that to fly from every area, area. My second thing is, you're not going for a speed run, right? You, you want to do this without dying. So, make sure you are 100% are aware that there are no ogres close to where you're going. Second little tip is try, try and take out the pit keeper before you get there. Don't 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 be jumping right in on top of this area, and then you know you've got a heap of ads to deal with. Try and try and make the area as clear as as you can, right? So to, I always try and take the pit keeper before I get there. I understand then I'm gonna have, you know six or anywhere between you know five and eight yellow bar uh, normal red bar acolytes and maybe some sniper acolytes to deal with but that's all i really want to deal with all right now for the bosses what i try and do is now is i've, I've kind of got a way of dealing with all three of the mini bosses when it's the when it's the night this one i go in and I try and gather as many of the thrall as I can and use the right trigger attack. Let's call it the, the Black Talon attack. I use the, the, the Black Talon attack to take out as many of the thrall as possible, but I, I don't actually go chasing all the thrall. If they come after me, I will disengage attack from the knight and right, right trigger them again. And then what I try and do is take the knight down maybe just under half, and then I use my super on him. And, and, and he won't have much left after that. So as you can see, once I've took an ad out, I'll scoop up some ammunition. And then I'll head to the next next tower. Now as you can see there, that's a brilliant little thing. What I normally do is if I'm above the tower I need to, need to jump to, I'll just jump down onto it and just block just to save fall damage. Because if you block with the sword, you will receive no fall damage. Now... The way this kind of area is set out, let's talk about the towers real quick. When you drop down to A, if you're looking out into the abyss, from A, Spike is going to be down to your left, and then right down far left is going to be Vex Head. Over to the right, you're going to have, I think most people are calling it now Equals, I still call it Sandwich, but Equals, Burger, and the one I call Turret. They are going to be, if you're standing on A, looking out into the abyss, they'll be on the right. Spike will just be down to your left, and Vex Head will be uh, down far left. What I try and do is, regardless of whatever, whatever sections I'm going to, so equals and Vex Head are right at the bottom. 
I try and I, I don't want to finish on lows. I want to be on the same level just about as the exit. So that I can I'm better placed to see what I've still got to deal with. And I can take the pit keeper out and any ogres, you know, I'm I'm not jumping up into that. I'm on the same level. I, I you know, I can see what I need to be dealing with. So they're kind of the real kind of tips for this area. You want once you're familiar with it. It's all right me saying this. You need to come in and experience this a couple of times. Just because you're watching the video doesn't mean you can just, I'll do exactly what Mondo done and I'll be able to do this. You need to be familiar and comfortable with this, right? And what I will say to anybody who's first time to the channel or, you know, has been looking for a run like this, if you play on PC, this is going to help. There's no two ways about it. This will help because the strategy's the strategy's strong. But... Without getting involved in a PC console argument, because I'm not going to, PC runs, although they'll show you what you need to do within the activity, just so you can't replicate a lot of the stuff on, on console. So, although these guys are super talented, and, and they are, and you know I'm not trying to say that I'm not going to get involved in that PC console argument. I've got my own thoughts on it, uh, which is why later on we'll talk about the recluse nerf. Uh, I I just think that you know if 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 you if if you own a certain type of car and you want to enter a a race, you're not going to look to see how a high performance car performed in that race. You want to see something closer to what you're using. Bad analogy, but you what I'm you get. Hopefully, you understand what I'm saying. That it's not that I'm ragging or you know, getting on top of PC players. I'm just saying that, that because of the platform, it allows the players that do these things on PC to do stuff that you guys aren't going to be able to do on console, that I'm not going to be able to do on console. So, anyway, if you're new to the channel, I'll try and keep getting content like this up, but it's, you know, it, some 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 feedback from you guys would be nice. What, what do you guys actually want to see? Because I feel like, you know, apart from stuff like this, I've still got a hunter, I've still got a Titan run, you know, real life stuff gets in the way sometimes, and it has been for some time, but hopefully we're going to start coming out of that soon and being able to get back to two or three videos a week. Uh, so let me know what you guys want to see, uh, if there's stuff that you guys, you know, are interested in. So anyway, as you can see, you know, we're moving quite nicely between the areas, so all we need now is a sword and what you'll find is that you don't worry about losing the sword because to get a sword back you just go to the nearest platform and this is the one you've got to worry about when you do come to the nearest platform don't hang around to smell the roses because you might have that's the flash mobs i was talking about the boomer and the snipers what i like to do is just get away from them you know because they can cause you a, a lot, they can do a lot of damage, but they can cause you a lot of harm. I get away from them, and kind of, because they will despawn. And when they despawn, then you're good. So this last one, this this is the Shrieker. Now, you don't always have to fight the Ogres. Just keep an eye on your mini-map, just to see. If you're blocking, you'll be able to, you know, this, the, the, the Ogres won't be able to do you too much damage. But as you can see, I managed to deal with the Shrieker, I don't have to bother with the ogres now. And I'm above where I need to go, but not, you know, that's what you want. You don't want to be below where you need to go. You want to be above and you can survey the area. So there's kind of, both sides, there's ledges like this. Now, you're going to get a heap of ads. They won't despawn until you kill the pit keeper. From up here, normally the pit keeper's just about, you know, just about there wanting, you know, quite easy for me to kill. This time, I had to deal with ads, but normally, you can just take the pit keeper out pretty quickly and then wait for the ads to despawn. And that's this first area done. Stay up here until the ads despawn because I know people that have done decent runs and got through this quite easily and have been killed at this part once they've done... It's happened to me. So stay up here and keep yourself safe. Just wait for them to despawn. That is this area finished. I will see you guys in the Tunnels of Despair.
So here we are at the Tunnels of Despair. Now, anybody that's seen my normal run will know I've got a pretty straightforward route that I take, which is I go up the right-hand side, I take the left-hand tunnel, go through, kill the ads, come out, cross over, go up to the right, but go in to the left-hand side, take a half moon round, that's us done the middle, then I come back, go into my left, kill the ads, grab the orb, go out the other side, and that's us on the right, and I leave the left-hand tunnel to last. Again, because I'm doing it on the screen, you can quite easily follow what I'm doing, so spit tips for doing the flawless. Again, one thing you're going to hear me say in this run quite a bit is be a moving target. Be hard to hit. Now, that doesn't mean swapping up mobility for, you know, resilience, although, as has been proven in Crucible, resilience doesn't really matter that much. But it does, I think, for stuff like this. Recovery and mobility are quite important. Uh, so having your having a decent amount of mobility and a decent amount of recovery is definitely going to help you in this run because you want to be more difficult to hit and the more difficult you are to hit, the more difficult you are to kill but that only works if you're moving so as you can see, we've, we've slammed the first one we're going to go down and go into the left here I stay close to the wall, I don't know why especially with that one that ogre, if you stay close to the left-hand wall, for some reason, he's like, ah, uh, you're fine. You know, he just lets you go. Uh, and I leave the left-hand side till last. The reason why is because when you when you go up to the left-hand door, you've got to come quite a way back to get into cover again. So it's worthwhile that being the last one. Now, for anybody that's actually used the timestamps to come straight to this one, this is going to be... I'm going to timestamp, obviously, the the chamber suffering on its own, but the, the run doesn't really stop. So we'll go right into that straight after this. Now, as you can see, I kind of, that's this is an, another tip, I kind of wasn't sure if I should really go, because normally an ogre comes straight at you again, at that side, right, on the right-hand side. So I was waiting for the ogre to come up. There's like a little post on the right-hand side of the doorway where you slam that you can get in its cover. Wait, if you see him coming, just go in there and wait. He'll come, he'll shoot, look at you for a bit, turn around and walk away. When you're doing a flawless run, you don't really want to be uh, taking chances like that. I can get in before he gets there because it takes one good stomping. That's the run done. So... I would say patience, but it's not. It's just it's just be efficient. Just be careful with what you're doing. Make sure you've got an understanding of what, what you're going to do when you come in. You know, it's like, for, for all the European fans, it's like, it's like someone taking a penalty kick. Know exactly where you're going to place the ball so that the, the indecision is taken out of the, the penalty kick. You know, it's exactly the same with these runs. Make sure you know what you're going to do. Take the indecision out of it. You don't want to be coming in to do a flawless run and be like, you know, four or five times be saying to yourself, why did I do that? I said to myself, I wasn't going to do that. If you said to yourself you're not going to do it, don't do it. If it doesn't work, at least you know. Instead of just, you know, a wing and a prayer, just I'll do whatever, you know. There is a difference and it's it's, it's stuff, stuff my, my clan know people I play with know, I use the word very, quite a lot, which is repeatability. It is more important to have a repeatable strategy than it is to just, oh, I got through it. How'd you get through it? I, I don't know. I was lucky. Well, there's a good chance you're not going to be have that luck every time you go in. So having a repeatable strategy, which comes from knowing exactly what you're going to do. So that's the tunnels finished. I will catch you guys in the next section which is the chamber of sorrow this is where the run starts now everything else you do in this dungeon is basically uh you can take your time make sure there's nothing in front of you go forward with baby steps be sure in your decisions this is like a this is a pressure cooker so the chamber of suffering which is a great name for it is basically about killing and moving now, the mechanics are very simple. You have to stay on this plate. Well, you don't have to stay on the plate, sorry. You have to keep refreshing the plate. It's like you cleanse this plate. 
uh, and that will stop the first, the one white mechanic. There is another white mechanic you can see a times um, t a, a counter uh, on the left hand side of the screen. If that ever hits ten, that's another white mechanic. And then of course you've got the the absolute droves of ads that come in that can end the run as well. There's very little cover in the fact that you've got to keep coming back onto the plate. It, it, it just makes for an interesting and pressurized situation. And it is, I think it's to test, it's it's just a different mechanic, just different from the other mechanics in, in the dungeon because it tests a different, a different skill set. So what I, the first thing I said to myself when I came in here was how fast can I kill all these ads? And you can control the flow of ads. But it literally is about how fast you kill them, which makes perfect sense, right? So I figured I couldn't kill every ad in this room fast enough to not have any ads. Because, as you can see, all it takes is for you to aim at one ad and you can get hit from another side. So then it was about positioning. So I need to keep making my way back onto this plate to refresh it, to cleanse the plate. As you can see there, you'll see me do that a few times. I'm jumping up, charging my grenade, because my grenade is going to be what takes the, the big knights out. So it was about positioning for me. So you've got your plate. The most dangerous place in this for you is right where we're standing, right? Now, it's not exactly where we were standing, but it's in this area. If I move forward onto the middle of the plate, I can be seen from both sides. I can get hit with flame bombs, you know, those really annoying attack that the, the hive have got now. The further forward I am on the plate, the more open I am. You can see I've moved forward to try and get, and, and I'm going to get hammered, right? So, up here, you'll notice during the run, there'll be times where I'll be up here, and I, it's like I'm not getting hit. Because I'm I'm using the only cover that there, there is in this this whole thing for us. So using this strategy, what I am doing is I am clearing the front so that I'm not getting attacked from the only open attack position. And there's basically two sets of ads that will come from the front. There's one that will come from the right hand side and there's one that will come from the back. I am not bothering with the right hand side very much. The only time I will I will bother with the right hand side is if I'm getting absolutely pepper bombed from the right with with those uh, fire grenade things, then I know that they've built up on the right to the point I need to deal with them, and then I'll I'm either throw my super at them because I'm not really going to be using my super too much. I'll throw my super at them, or I'll just melt them with twenty one percent. I'm charging grenades and dropping grenades on top of those ads over there. What that's doing is that's giving me my orb and it's giving me my grenades, uh, my, my heavy. And if I kill enough, because I've got the Controverse holds, seems to be the more you do, more enemies you do damage to with the Controverse, the higher the chance is you're going to get your grenade back. But the biggest thing is the minute you are taking any damage, you know that either because you've been charging a grenade or because you've been dealing with another set of ads, you know then that ads have built up in some place. They're there, it's in some place, and they, they've, they're targeting you. So until you are in a position where you can fight back, start moving left to right, jumping. Don't just run because the ground is your enemy because that's where the flame bombs are going to land, right? So with the boomers, every time you slam, obviously, you're going to get boomers. You'll see here with this second one, what I do is I snipe the first one, two shots, and you're good. I turn, get a shot on the second one, and you'll, I do it every time. I'll get one shot, then I'll back away. I'll come out of my, my sight just for a second so that I can see, you know, on my mini-map what, what I've got to deal with. And I'll back away before I get my second shot. And what that does is moves me away from the incoming throw enough that I can get a shot and then get out of there. I repeat that every time. So the other thing is before you take down a knight, make sure you've cleared the front side, right? Now you can't always completely clear it, 
but you just don't want to have a mountain of ads thrown grenades and stuff at you because stuff like this could happen now that as you can see the thrawler here i'm trying to take the thrall first now the boomer knights are up now the thrawler on me right so luckily i had a grenade and the 21 percent is is good enough to take out take out a knight but you don't want that situation to happen so before you slam make sure there are no encroaching ads the worst ads you can have encroaching aren't the thrall it's it's the acolytes because the acolytes have a couple of different attacks they've got these as you can see i'm getting pepper bombed here with these these solar grenades i've backed right up i backed right up there and i backed right up because i'm a harder target to hit from the sides the further back i am and i'm just as you you'll see me constantly do this i'm really only interested in the front area because i can stop left and right from hitting me see i can stop both of them from hitting me right they'll throw they'll throw bombs but if i'm in the right place they can't hit me so i'm literally just worried about this front side because they can they can they can deal damage to me whenever so i missed a grenade there it happens so now i'm just waiting for the ads to come at the front making sure that they can't just come because they'll just come out and start throwing grenades you know that there's no kind of wind up they'll just come out and start charging the 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 solar solar damage and i'm just waiting for another another grenade i'm just moving keep keep myself in cover i and again i can't stress how much you do not need to clear every side it is, I don't think it's worth your will clearing every side, right? I, I've, 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 I've never done it. I've never bothered with clearing every side. I've always felt like the right-hand side is kind of its, its own little system, its own little area. It can stay that way. Now we've got a grenade. We'll be a little bit more. There we go. Drop that on there. Just clear any of the ads. I'm not going to get hit by the grenade. Now I'm back to the front to clear the front got an orb take out the one of the ads don't leave when, when you t when you get an orb don't leave the orb for too long because it will go and it's just a waste so you know make sure make sure you're in a position to actually go and take the orb so this time we're good put down more rift each time hive invigoration every time we take down a knight or an exploder thrall there you go as you see i get a shot on that right hand side and then i back away i've got a grenade We'll put that down. That will clear most of the plate for us. And because it's hive and I've got hive ar uh, armaments, I'm getting heavy back. So, you know, and farm the menagerie for these mods. If you don't have them, go into your menagerie. Do as many menageries as you, you get three powerfuls per character per week. So, or, or three, attack, three chances at mods. Make sure you're doing the menagerie just for the mods. You know, it's quite quick to do it now. So... Do it on all your characters and make sure, as I said, that you're, you're, you're crafting. I would probably go with a Mark Bond Cloak, whichever one. Mark Bond Cloak, a class item, and boots. Because for, the, for, the, for what we're setting, setting it up for with the grenades and stuff, you want to put them on your chest plate, right? So it, you, can, you can do whatever you want. You can farm whatever you want. Do it whatever way you want to do. But I chose to farm uh, a class item and leg armor. And if you just follow follow the routine, set, set a routine up for yourself, you'll start to know when you need to move. And you need to move. You know, and make sure you're landing on the plate. You need to keep touching that plate. Keep just making sure that you're cleansing it by m moving across it. And what will happen is, this section will be over before you even realize that it is. It will come as a surprise because you're that engaged in what you're doing. It always happens to me. It's always over before I'm, I think it should be. So that is this section. Keep moving. Clear that front section. And, and you know, clear the right section when you have to. But, you know, make sure the left section is where you're taking your knight from because it seems to be the better one to do that with. And I will see you guys at the start of the Harrells.
this area was probably the most confusing for me because I had a bit of a time trying to work out the quickest way to get to everywhere. So as you can see on the screen, we'll go left to right so that you guys understand my, my terminology. We've got Spike, Spikey A and Crown because the one on the right looks like kind of a stick drawn of the Crown of Tempest. They are the, quick, the quickest way to access those is from the exit. So you've got Turret, which isn't on there, Spike, Crown and sp Spikey A. Right, they are, those four sigils are easy, easiest to get get to from the exit. If you have A, which is just the A, the quickest way to get to that is this way: is to go right. Okay, that's the quickest way to get to A. If you have Vex Head, the quickest way from the start to get to that is to go left. Right, and as you can see, you you know. I get lost a little bit here because I didn't know it so well when I was doing this. But I, I came back in and, and, and learned. <laughs> but uh, you'll also see I changed to strafe jump because I can have more control over my jumping. I can be more precise with it and I think that's important here. But for the, as I say, turret, spike, crown and spiky A, the easiest way to get to them are from the exit. If your back is to the exit, Spike is to your right. If your back's to the exit, just to your right hand side, if you just go along, it's right there. There's no real jumping involved, it's just there. Left, with your back to the exit, is turret, straight across to the left. If you go from the exit, straight in front of you, you'll see right in front of, from the exit, this, this platform here. And what you would want is to get onto this platform and go left from the exit go straight forward jump onto that platform and jump over that spiky barrel to the left and that will take you to crown which is the one that looks like the crown of tempest like a stick drum and then to get to spiky a it, from the exit you want to go kind of diagonal kind of diagonally right you'll see me do it in, in the video from 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 the exit. You want to go diagonally right from the exit and you'll come to two more kind of spiky barrels going up and down. There's a ledge at the side of the cliff, you'll jump onto that and then if you'll turn round, this is where we are now, right now where we are in the video, just to our right is, is spiky, uh, spiky A, as I call it. Probably could come up with better names for it, but that, that, that is what it is. <laughs> if you don't like my, my names, you know, so you'll see me go to those ones. You'll see me go to now. I did actually wonder there's the exit there, and the exit has three sigils on it, which are the same sigils you need for the start. There on the left, as I said, if, you, if your back is facing, if your back is facing the exit, then you would be looking right. That is spike because it just is a, is a heap of spikes, right? And then the opposite side from the exit is turret which to me just looks like a stick drawn of a turret really easy to access both of these from the exit i didn't realize it was so simple i feel like an idiot but when you get to the exit as you see we're going to jump across here to get to crown it's straight up onto the the, the platform uh the roundish platform, if that's where I'm going, I don't think so. I think I'm taking taking us over to, uh, is that Vex Head? No, that was that was Turret. Sorry. So, as you can see, I'm trying to reference where, where I've lost myself. Where am I going? The other thing about this area is you can get lost because of everything that's going on, and you're doing a flawless run. So. You just have to take care. You just have to make sure that you're going in the right directions. Right? So there's Spike again. So what I'm actually wanting to do here is get back to the exit and either go forward all the way or diagonal. So we're looking. I'll be able to tell us exactly because I've done this run on Friday. I've just had stuff going on. There we go. I'm going diagonally right onto this part. And there's a ledge over on the side of the... There, you can see it in the distance there. There's an ad there. 
it's round, facing where we're going now, it's round to the left. So we'll jump on here and then we'll jump, once we can jump over this barrel, we'll go over to this kind of ledge over here, get a better view of where we're going next. And it's just round to the left. It's just round to the left. It's in, When we jump over this first barrel, you'll see exactly where we're going. It's just round here. The ads will tell you exactly where you need to go because that's where you need to go. Go forward here and as you'll see, there we go, spiky A. And a super does that. Now we're going to make it back to the exit and then it's straight forward from the exit onto the round round kind of platform that goes it goes around a big pillar. And we're going to jump over one of these spiky barrels. It's not these ones, it's another set to the left. And that will take us straight to there. And then we can just come straight back the way we came to the exit. And then we're on to the boss. Only things I can say to help you is, is here is take your time. Make sure you know where you're jumping to. Don't rush it. You'll be fine. Just take your time. Strafe jump on the warlock is a godsend. If you're doing it on the Titan, I would I would say lion rampants. And if any if I hear anybody call it ramparts, there's no R. What are you doing with yourself? Rampants. I used to have a, used to have a friend that used to call the warlock boots the lunification. So I used to say to him back in D2, year one, I'd be like, oh, what what vacation are you going to go with this time? I'm going to go with the uh, future walkout vacation. He's like, it's faction. I was like, yeah, so the boots. Idiot. Anyway, friendly banter. I'm going to leave you guys with the rest of this run, and I will get you guys at the boss, and we will finish this puppy once and for all. This is it, guys. We've now made it to the boss. You're on a... Literally, you're a couple of DPS phases away from doing the flawless. How can I help you here? Well, as you can see, I've changed weapons. I have went with Izanagi. I have went with the Recluse. And I'm using the grenade launcher that we spoke about at the start, Love and Death. Uh, so, the reason I went with Izanagi is because it, one hits the, the Sword Knights. And... My kind of strategy here was to get out of this area pretty quickly. Not the boss area, the middle area. Because there's a lot going on in the middle area to start with. And and I will explain what, what I mean. When you're in the middle area, you've got Thrall, you've got Sword Knights, you've got the boss. But you've also got two sections of these mini-bosses 
a streaker and a wizard that if you try and find a decent place to to clear the ads if you're in their vicinity they'll shoot at you as well so what I what I mean by get out of there is I try and get a sword knight down pretty quickly and then just go after one of the bosses right unfortunately the boss I picked was the knight I would have liked one of the the ranged attack bosses so either the shrieker or the wizard but what I get you're safe here up here believe it or not where the bosses are is where you're safest if you go around the back of each boss tower it's enclosed no ads can come that way from you so they can either come left or right and the sword can really mess up the ads so what I kind of like to do is I get up get in uh, get a sword knight down and then go after the bosses now you know as you can see there's a heap of ads congregating at the bottom of the stairs we just stick a grenade on them now if you're on a, you might be saying yeah that's cool if you're on a wallet what about titan or hunter well they both have void wall which is really really strong you know so once once i've took once i've took the first one down again it's about movement right so what we're doing is we're just making myself a hard target, taking out ads when we can, but we want it, we want and there's the sword knight. It's the sword knight we really want. Take him down real quick and then make it to another area. But the sword really deals with with the trash ads well. These thrall can be annoying. Now you you'll see here what I mean about the ranged attack at bosses. Right. Uh, if if I was to find a place in between the two towers to take out ads, you know, something that could give me a bit of cover from from the boss, the shrieker can actually shoot at me, and so can the wizard from the other side. So, you know, I like to get up here and get get these towers to at least two of them cleared, because then I know I've got an area in between the two sections that I've actually cleared. I've got I've got an area where I can I can get in there and I can I can, I'm safe from any kind of fire from the sides. So now that we've cleared two areas, but we, we know there's the wizard. We know we've got the wizard over there. So I'm just gonna make a run round to one of the other slam points away from the boss. Don't slam near the boss. And then you're gonna you know we, we could get some more ads. I've went with a recluse. Any kind of energy high rate of fire weapon would be good you don't have to use the recluse you know i just decide to because well why not i'm not using it to do anything major i know there's still that you know people still have an issue with using weapons like this well sorry but it's been out a while <laughs> it has been out a while it's quite easy to get now you know so now that all the i've got i've got access to all the swords right now we're going to try and Take out the last couple of enemies that are kind of lying about before we go after the wizard. Now, we don't want to use too much sword ammo because then we won't have enough for the wizard. So, we know we've got one left. We'll just come up here and t take care of the wizard. The wizard's the most annoying out of these bosses. So, I always put a grenade. I always put a grenade to take out because you always get a heap of acolytes. Right, right from here, I can tell you this isn't the right place to attack and I've moved to the right place because you know you want you don't want to be in a position where she can attack you left and right now what I mean by that is she won't come out but you want somewhere like that's that, that you've got cover you know and what you don't want is to be stepping from one piece of cover and maybe overstepping the next piece of cover and there's an open doorway that you can shoot through and you're still taking you're still taking damage. So I know now if I go left, she can't shoot the floor left because it's enclosed. It's total cover. So this is the place to attack from. So the only other thing I would say about this part is as you can see me doing it now, make sure you're fully reloaded. Make sure you as an Aggie's got the honed edge shot. We're gonna come down here. Now because I'm on the Warlock, I have a very specific, you know, uh, attack pattern. We're trying to move this boss away from the slam, slam point. I always find the first time you slam, the very first time you slam this boss, 
uh, he, he really doesn't want to move away from the slam point. After that, you can be a bit luckier. So what I do, my attack plan is charge grenade, super. And then put an Esanagi on. Know what I'm going to do because now you've got a couple of different things to look out for. You've got exploding throw, curse throw, and you can see them all around. So I'm just I've got I've got strafe jump on so I can control my 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 uh, trajectory and my directional uh, where I'm floating to basically, and I just stay in the air. You know I can see I can see the exploders get the last couple of shots off. Can I get an Izanagi? Yes, I can. Very, very close there. But it's worthwhile having having your Izanagi reloaded. So what I'm going to do now is just run round. You know, I'm not. I'm not really going to. I'm. I'm going to try and get rid of as many many of the, of the exploders as possible by jumping over them and getting them to explode. You know, if you if you can't, just don't stay in somewhere too long. So you can see I'm getting shot from the side. That's really what I wanted to do, is is get rid of get rid of a knight so I can get myself into a safe position. I always charge a grenade and throw it at the ads, just gets rid of them. Uh, heavy as well. You know, the the the, the top tree slover is really powerful. The grenade is really powerful. So what I'm doing here, I know this still adds up. So I'm using my block, and I'm going to take it. I don't want to have to deal with, you know, little bits, grenades and fire and stuff like that when I'm trying to take this boss down. So I'll make my way in by blocking, and then and then I'll make sure all the ads are gone. And then it's rinse and repeat. You know, don't worry about the exploders too much. If that's that's not good advice. What I mean is. Don't make them your focus. You know, if you were on a hunter, I would probably, I probably would, if it was me, I'd probably, I'd probably go tether. I'd still have oppressive darkness on at this part. I would go tether. I would tether the ground, and I would keep moving because kill it's it's better to kill the exploders if they're tethered because the boss will take additional damage and the boss will take that thirty percent damage. As you can see, just from moving about, I'm getting hit a lot. Now, what we want is we're trying to find a, a safe place, a safe place to, to to slam. I've had to put a grenade down. I can slam here. Anything that comes into the grenade, it's gonna have a bad day. Now I'm gonna move about. I've got chart. I've got my Izanagi. I've took out a heap of the ads. So we'll jump over this guy, turn, and take his sword. So we know we've got a heap of those guys, one right trigger, and and that's all the. That's all the the throw gone. So we're getting into our position. It's it's the the shriek the shrieker at the start and here, it's a bit of a kind of it's a bit of giveaway for a boss because you just block and nothing can hit you, and then once once you've killed it. Then use the sword to take out the rest of the enemies. And that's this done. And again, it just seems to work that way for me. That it's nearly always the wizard that's left. So, annoying thing is when you're trying to recharge. This is what I was trying to make sure I was reloaded with everything. But I kept picking the sword back up. So again, you want to move around the edge. Find a, a safe position. We've got, we were still going to have exploders. So just jump over them. And they'll explode. What I do with the chart is I try and charge as I'm running. So that... I, I don't know, for some reason I, I've got it in my head that it just makes me a little bit harder for, for any of the ads to slam or kill because, you know, where they think I'm going to stop, I'm not going to stop. Uh, and now we'll take out the last of the throw. Now, it's not, I don't think it's this damage phase. I think it might be the next one. I nearly miss a full damage phase because... As you guys know, and as I said at the start, I wasn't going to explain, you know, as if you guys had never done this before, because why are you coming into a flawless if you've never beat it before? But the ground in the center goes green during DPS, and you get curse throw and all this stuff. He's got a couple of attacks. 
well, there will there is a time in this in, in this run where I I I'm pretty sure I'm on you know I'm on DPS. I am on DPS. Why hasn't the ground gone green? And then I run around looking to see if there's any bosses still, and then notice there's exploders. And then look, and now the ground's gone green. So I miss a large bolt, which is why it's a, a 4 DPS. 4 or 5, I can't remember. I was, as, I say, as I've said, and I'll, I'll reiterate this, this wasn't about speedrunning or going in, oh look, I two-phased the boss. This was about getting a, a repeatable flawless. And most of the things that I'm doing in here will work everything I'm doing here will work every time because it's not the first time I've come in on, you know, before I got the Flawless, I'd worked out a lot of these strategies anyway I think the Harrows was the last thing that I needed to know properly so that I wasn't like just running about looking for red on my screen, and now I've got a fair idea of the Harrows and you know, where all the sigils are so, again, we'll slam ground goes green charge the grenade, drop a grenade on him, and then throw my super. That's what I'm going to do first time, every time. So now I just, I never managed to get the Izanagi on him because Sword Knight pushed me. Doesn't happen all the time, but now, now it's about, if I, if I can at all do that, I'm going to do that. I'm going to drop a grenade, a grenade launcher on any exploders that I see getting close. And that's why grenade launchers for me are very good here because you don't have to ADS, so you can still be aware of what you're doing. So I always get rid of all my deep, all my, all my, my grenades. We reload, try and get an Izanagi on them. We got another one, seventy-one thousand for your Izanagi. And now we've got a couple of knights here. We want to get rid of these exploders if we can, if we can get rid of them. But that's the idea. Make sure you've got your charge shot for Izanagi. We know that we've got a Sword Knight round here. Get rid of him. And then we can just rinse and repeat as soon as we've got a sword. A sword. And now we get the wizard first. So get round to a position. And you will get ads that will push you round here. That's fine. It's, it's, it's no problem. And I will put a, a charge grenade over there. Hopefully the ads will run into it. You'll get yellow numbers if they do. And they didn't. Oh, some of them did. When you're when you're taking out the wizard as well, be sure to aim your shot a little bit higher so it clears the stairs. Because if not, you're going to end up with that thing where you're, you're firing it at the stairs. And it just wastes ammunition. So just make sure you're aiming high. And it just... And the other thing is, and I've said, I've said this before, you can see a couple of those shots that I was throwing, I can't see the wizard. I don't need to be able to see the wizard. I need the shot to go past the doorway because it tracks, and it's 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 actually not a bad not bad tracking, you know. So again, wizard down. Reach out. Make sure you've got your honed edge shot. Make sure you're reloaded with everything. I'll pick up any heavy I see about, and I've got full heavy. Probably got full as an Aggie at this point, and now I'll find somewhere where I can slam the orb. Rinse and repeat. That is basically what it's about, guys. Is you need to be a difficult target at all times. That uh, that this isn't going to be something that you're just going to be able to run round and uh, if you stand here, you're safe and you won't get hit. And you you have to be a hard target. So I'm going to try and slam as I'm running. It moves me away from the the, the point I've I've uh, I've ran from. Throw a grenade on those. There was quite a lot of them there. Just that's what that's at the moment. That's what we're doing. Just running around trying to make sure that there's no we're not there isn't a build up of ads. Now we want to get more honed edge because we know there's a knight just around here. That knight seems to stick to specific areas, you know. They, they once they get past an area they shouldn't be in, it's almost like they go, Oh, no, I better go back to where my place is. So we put a grenade down if we've got one, we don't have one. Which is cool because now we'll have to use the sword. Just be careful at these parts because, as I say, I've always found with with these solo runs, it's when you think that you're safest is where you get you're not safest. That's where complacency comes in. Complacency and 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 you know if you've come up with a strategy, not sticking to the strategy to go with your complacency. 
it's what's going to end a lot of runs. You know, you if you're watching this video and you have, let's say you've got Izanagi. If you've got Izanagi and you're watching this video, you can do this. If you don't have Izanagi, you can still do this. It's just what I chose to use because it, for what I wanted, this was the most effective loadout. You don't have to have, you could come in here with Swarm of the Raven, with Spike Needs and Boss Spec. You know, my my Long Shadow will foreshot the, the Knights. But, I mean, the loadout I actually started it with is just as good. Because, you know, uh, uh, the Yolten will do a lot of damage to the Sword Knights. And it can be used to clear groups of ants. So, you know, it's more so the strategy. The strategy has got to be the most important part. As you can see, I'm just waiting to see if he's going to walk back. But I moved far enough away from the where I was going to slam that I was still safe. So, Sword Knight wasn't really pushing. So, I stopped and took out the thrall. You see the Sword Knight is gone inside. So, now that I've got two clear sides, it's, it's, it's a little bit less... Uh, it's a little bit less congested in the centre. I, now I can take out the, the sword knight. This, is, I think, is the one where I miss almost a, you know, I miss a good chunk of the DPS. You know, we've got the shrieker, we're going to, this is what I'm talking about, about getting, you can see there, I should have blocked, I nearly, that was nearly the end of that run. Because I wanted to get a grenade in there. So, complacency, it's always, you know, devil makes work for idle hands, all that type of stuff's all linked. If, if you, if you, that's not really linked, is it? It kind of is, because what I mean is, if you're not sticking to the plan or you're not, you know, anything can happen. That's when you get yourself into trouble. You know, when you think, ah, oh, I'll just do this instead, and it's not part of the plan. Stick to the plan, whatever plan it is you've made. You know, trust in the process. I like that saying. I've been hearing it quite a lot recently. I've been found a way to use it. So as you can see, it didn't look like the ground was green. I was like, oh, no DPS. Um, there must be another add up. There must must be another boss. Got that. You guys will have seen that first time it happened. And now I see the exploders. I'm like, oh, they don't come unless it's DPS. So I missed a fair bit of the DPS because of that. I, there was, I found as well, somebody was asking me which one I preferred, this or the Shark Throne. Well, I, I don't think the Shark Throne was quite as buggy as this. I found I found the, the Pit of Heresy to be quite buggy, but I found Shadow Keep to be quite a buggy uh, expansion. So as you can see there, we never got a lot of DPS. So we got to go for a fourth phase. So what I'm going to do, guys... As I'm going to call it there. Basically I'm going to rinse and repeat the exact same strategies we've been talking about. Try and take a sword knight out. Go and get go and get, uh, go and get one of the sides dealt with. And then come down, rinse and repeat. And, and you guys can now maybe have a look at this last section. And you know, alright, he, he he's done that again. Oh, he's doing this. We've got the wizard again. Great. <laughs> and... I hope this, I really do hope this helps all of you guys give this a real good go. I've got faith in you all, 100%. If you're willing to go in and spend the time, you can do this. And you know what I would love? I would love somebody in the comment section to post a picture of the flawless emblem that this video helped them get. So if this video helps you get a flawless emblem, don't be shy. Come and let people know, listen... I, I got it. You know, this video helped. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will, ex I've, I've got a bit of explaining to do, but I'm, I'm not going to really speak about it in this video. So I will, I will, it will be in a, probably one of my next videos and we'll have a little talk about what's been going on in the past month or two. Thank you very much for watching. You guys know I appreciate you all the time. Take it easy. Good luck with your flawless. If you think this video deserves a like, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video.